All right, today we're going to talk about differentiation rules. So instead of using the definition of a limit or a definition of a derivative, which is f prime of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. I'm terribly sorry, this is the definition of f prime of a, but this, this is insanity. This takes way too long to do complex derivatives. So we're not going to do any of that. Instead, we're going to teach you some very quick tricks and we'll go from there. So first, if we take the derivative of a constant, so we take y is equal to some constant k, where k is any number, so k any number, then y prime, the derivative, is equal to zero. And here's the second one for you. If you have y is equal to x, then the derivative of y is going to be 1. So you're going to take these two for granted, and you can test these out using the definition of the derivative if you'd like to. You don't really have to. It's, it might be good to do, because you're going to have to do one exam question using the definition of a derivative, and you're going to say, oh, but I can do this so quickly if I'd use these rules and these tricks. But, you know, you should test these out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. All right, so I'm going to show you guys uh, one thing here. Okay. I want you guys to see if you can find a pattern. If I take y is equal to x squared, I get the derivative y prime is equal to 2 times x. And here's another one. If I take y is equal to 5x to the fourth, I get y prime is equal to 20x cubed. Do you think there's a pattern for these types of derivatives? Well, I'll show you this pattern. If we take the derivative with respect to x of x to some power n, we get n times x to the n minus 1. So as an example, if we take the derivative with respect to x of x cubed, we get 3 times x to the 3 minus 1, which is 3x squared. You can test this using the definition of the derivative if you want to, or you can take my word for it. But here's a question. What if we have 1 over x cubed? Well, this doesn't work any differently. Because if you realize 1 over x cubed is the same thing as saying x to the negative third. So if we take y is equal to x to the negative third, then the derivative of y is equal to negative 3 x times negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 3, to the x to the negative 4, which you can rewrite this as negative 3 over x to the 4. You can do either of these ways. You can leave it like this or like this. doesn't really matter. This one kind of looks nicer. You can see what's going on, but again, it's not required. Okay, so we just did some pretty easy derivatives here. These are much faster, much faster, much, much faster. So we're going to do a couple more rules. Um, much like limit laws, we have differentiation laws. And that is if we take the derivative with respect to x of a constant c times a function, it's the same thing as c times the derivative of the function. So as an example, if we say, well, what is, if we have y is equal to 3x squared, then what is the derivative of y prime? Well, we know from the fact that it's 6x from our differentiation rules, but how does this fit into this right here? Well, it's the same thing as saying 3 times the derivative of x squared, which is 3 times 2x, which is equal to 6x. So this is a law you can separate the constant out of your variables, and they're equal to the same thing. And another thing here is rule number two, we take the derivative with respect to x of two functions f of x plus or minus g of x. It is equal to the derivative of f of x plus or minus the derivative of g of x. So I, I wrote these two different ways, but hopefully you understand the notation enough that this shouldn't be a big deal. 
Again, it's the same thing as the derivative with respect to x of f of x plus the derivative with respect to x of g of x. These two notations are exactly the same. Just one is easier to write, one is harder to write, a little bit longer. They both mean the same thing. Pick whichever one you choose. I'm probably going to stick with this top one right here. It's really fast. In fact, I might even shorthand it further to just be f prime plus or minus g prime. I might not even include uh, the function of x in there because we're just talking about functions and it's quicker to remember these things with mnemonics or whatever if you don't use all these different variable names and shorten it as much as possible. So now that we have those rules, let's show an example of that rule. Let's find the derivative with respect to x of 3x squared plus x. Well, if we just do this whole thing, we know it's 6x plus 1, since uh, I should do this a little bit slower. It's 3 times 2x to the 2 minus 1 uh, plus, well, x to the 1, so that's 1x to the 1 minus 0, which of course is equal to 6x plus x to the 0 is 1, so these are two ways of doing it. I'll show it a little bit slower. But this is also the same as the derivative with respect to x of 3x squared plus the derivative with respect to x of x. That is not even an x, okay. Which again is 6x plus 1. These, these are interchangeable. In fact, we can make this plus or minus. It really doesn't make a difference. But these are two very crucial limit laws that you should remember. Okay, so let's do an example. What is the derivative of x squared times 1 minus 2x? Well, first what we do is we distribute our x squareds in. So we have x squared minus 2x cubed. And then we take the derivative. So y prime is equal to, well, 2x to the 2 minus 1 minus, well, we take the 3 down. We multiply it by what we have. We take x and we remove one power, so this is equal to 2x minus 6x squared. Again, if you can do this mentally from this point to this point, which you will be able to do very, very quick with practice, then this should not be an issue at all. Okay, and I guess we'll do one more example with fractional powers. So we have y is equal to the square root of x times x minus 1. Well, we know the root of x is equal to x to the 1 half times x minus 1. We can distribute these inside, so x to the 3 halves minus x. And then when we take our derivatives, it is the same thing here. So we have y prime is equal to, well, we take 3 halves down, 3 halves x to the 3 halves minus 1 minus 1, since the derivative of x is equal to 1. So this is 3x to the 1 half over 2 minus 1, which you don't have to simplify this any further, but if you think it looks nicer, you can say 3 root x minus 2 over 2. This doesn't matter. It's all trivial at this point. But just thought I'd give you guys many different ways to write this out. In fact, honestly, I would have stopped at Whoa, I did not mean to erase here. What is going on? I would have stopped at that point right there. Um, I'm tempted to leave this out, but I guess I'll put this in this video just so I get it out of the way. The derivative with respect to x of the function e to the x is equal to itself. There's elaborate proofs online that you can find. I'm not going to show it to you right here. I don't really think it's that important to know why for a Calculus 1 course and an Analysis course. Absolutely, it's important. But I'll leave the details out for this one. But it is the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. It's the same thing. So I say if we have y is equal to e to the x plus x plus 2, what is y prime? Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of any number is 0. So, put that in brackets. So, it's e to the x plus 1. Again, these are 
this this is your most simple lesson in derivatives this should be very very quick for you i'd recommend doing a few practice problems in fact i'm just going to write some out right here find the derivatives of the following functions uh 4 over x squared plus 9x uh 3x cubed plus x to the negative 5 mm. 9x to the 4 fifths plus 2e to the x plus 7. And let's do uh, 9 over x to the 6 sevenths minus 7 plus 632x. I'm not going to do any of these for you. Just Punch them into Wolfram Alpha. It'll tell you the derivatives. These are very, very quick practice problems that you can pull out of your butt if you want to. You can make up your own and plug, plug them into Wolfram Alpha. Again, it's just about practice and getting familiar with these concepts and doing them quickly. So I'm going to leave you with a much harder practice question. One that I think is uh, much more appropriate. It is an application problem of particles and motion, which I talked about a couple videos ago. So... Your position function, s of t, is equal to t cubed minus 3t. What do I want to know? I want to find, so I want to know the acceleration at t is equal to 2. And I want to know when the velocity is equal to 0. And I want to know what time that is. So think about this one, think hard, think long about it, and... I'll get back to you in a second with the answer, and hopefully this won't be too difficult for you. Alright, hopefully you should have attempted this by now. First, we're going to start out by taking the derivative. If you remember, the derivative of the position function is the velocity function. So, v of t would be the derivative of s of t. So, t cubed becomes 3t squared, and minus 3t becomes minus 3. Okay? And the acceleration is just the derivative of the velocity function. So 3t squared becomes 6t. Okay, that was quick. And what do we know? We want to know when t is equal to 2, what is the acceleration? So a of 2 is equal to 6 times 2, which is equal to 12. So acceleration is 12. And when is velocity equal to 0? So what we want to know is when is 3t squared minus 3 equal to 0? Well, 3t squared is equal to 3, so t squared is equal to 1. So we know that t is plus or minus 1. Well, time can't be negative, so when velocity is 0 is when t is equal to 1. So we can plug 1 into t. And we know the velocity is 0 when t is equal to 1. That was the two answers to our question. You can find other information, like what is the position when the velocity is 0. Well, let's take a look. When the velocity is 0, then the position is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So it's further down in the ground. Or what is the acceleration when the velocity is 0? Well, a of 1 is just equal to 6, so the acceleration is 6. You can check out so many different things with just a position function because you can take its derivatives if we were giving you the acceleration function you could go backwards by taking antiderivatives which we'll talk about at a way later time but uh, physics has at least an elementary application to derivatives so hopefully uh, you remembered something from a couple videos ago we we're able to do that question if not, uh, this is very important to remember that position, velocity, and acceleration are all related. There's usually an exam question about this. In fact, almost exactly what I'm talking about here. And uh, it's, it's usually free marks because it's very easy to do with derivatives. It's very easy to do algebraically. It's just remembering what they're talking about and what they're looking for conceptually. So hopefully that was good. Um, if not, practice, practice, and next time we'll come back with some 
differentiation of more difficult functions, mainly functions that multiply each other.